Hello, this is Trinity Aeronaut, and this is the second of my series that I'm going to start. And uh, this one is the one that, uh, the first one took the best photo that you could take, and uh, the second one takes it into your favorite photo editor. In my case, it is Photoshop. I have decided that since Photoshop is my thing and uh, you have always, so many of you have expressed an interest in learning how to do Photoshop. I have decided to give you a series of fo Photoshop. This not only will cover how to take a great photo, a, a really good photo, the best photo you can pull out of Second Life and turn it into a great photo, but it will also uh, teach you uh, some of the ins and outs of Photoshop. And uh, this is the first in that series. I have to tell you, for those of you that don't think Photoshop is an option for you because you're priced out of it. Photoshop has done, Adobe has done a fabulous thing in the last year, year and a half, and that is they have, they have pulled this creative suite apart and they, they have been providing these, uh, these applications a, a la carte, which means that you could get something like Photoshop or you could get Photoshop for literally no more than $9 a month. And that is so affordable that anybody could really afford it. Uh, which, you know, looking at PicMonkey, PicMonkey is $4.99 a month. That's, that's, that's $5. And Photoshop is only $4 more a month. And you get so much more. And I just, I have to tell you, it makes for a great photo. Now this is a extended, very long uh, 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 tutorial. So I want to whet your appetite by showing you what we start with and what we end with. Start, end, so that you will sit through this whole thing. Um, I have to say that I, I, I really like Photoshop. I really, uh, I really have enjoyed it. It's fun. Have fun, get creative and try to get, and try to get through the bulk of these, uh, the series that I'm going to do because I really think that I can provide you some useful, instructive, free tutorials. Without further ado, let's start the tutorial. So, as you can see, this is an this is the image that we took at the end, and this was the image that we had at the end of the last lesson. And I'm going to enlarge it. You can enlarge it by going over here to this magnifying glass, which will allow you to choose one of choose one of several things. You can do a hundred percent enlargement you can fit the screen or you can fill the screen let's go ahead and fit the screen and you can see that this is indeed <clears throat> a, a as the best image we could bring out with us uh, it is sharp if you look at the neck you've got no dips you've got no uh, uh, li lines of demarcation where the head doesn't meet the uh, the the or doesn't match the the coloring of the neck um, and the body. Uh, overall, it's it's a really good image, but it's not a great image. It's the best image we could bring out, but you may notice that the color is 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 kind of uh, uh, underwhelming uh, the uh, the eyes uh, look a little bit flat they have no life um, and that is that is uh, unfortunately a a side effect of of the some of the eyes that 
are uh, some of the Katwa appliers. As I said, uh, they don't they're, they don't have a lot of those amazing eyes that uh, uh, designers and artists have actually brought in for systemize, uh, have created for systemize. These are eyes that um, I'm still waiting for the the best eye creators to start making appliers for Katwa eyes and and Laluca eyes. So uh, in the meantime, we'll do a little bit of eye work on this ourselves. All right, let's talk about, let me give you a quick tutorial uh, about Photoshop itself. You've got the menu bar up here. You've got over here, you've got your toolbar, your main toolbar. If you might, if you will notice that each at the options bars up here change with each tool you choose from over here. Over here, you've got your layers, and none of you know all of these are here. We've got history, we've got brushes all that kind of thing, but uh, this is for another tutorial, really going in-depth about what you're seeing on on screen is, is really another tutorial. This particular tutorial I wanted to do to, just to give you an idea of how to take a really great photo out of Second Life and then make it better. So that's what I'm going to do now and I will have another tutorial on how to use Photoshop from the beginning later uh, I'll do it an intro uh, to Photoshop uh, tutorial later so the first thing we want to do is give this some color because it really lacks it's really lacking color and uh, so the first thing we want to do is warm it up and then the second thing we want to do is maybe make it look a little bit more uh, realistic so I'm gonna have you go to image adjustments photo filter now photo filter can actually change this color and make it a little bit more substantial what I'd like to do here now is choose a warming filter. So let's choose, I don't know, maybe maybe that filter. Well, maybe not that filter. Okay. Um, let's choose a a more more of a warming filter. Um, Okay. It looks a little bit better, but I don't know that it's extreme enough. So now keep in mind that this is art. This is as much art as it is a method of 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 doing of doing um uh of how to use Photoshop. It's it's as much about figuring out what this piece needs than it is so I think it's I'm gonna give me give it some contrast and look at that that is even that much better and I'm gonna give it a little bit of brightness too maybe not quite that much okay all right. Now the way I'm judging this is I want you to look here at the nose. See the nose on this on both sides? The, if you notice the brighter I go, the less shadow I'm seeing on that in that nose, which means I'm dropping detail. The less shadow I'm seeing over here on the sides of the face and the more washed out this particular area looks. However, this amount of contrast is really improving the look of my image. 
So, now that I've warmed it up, it's looking a little bit warm. So let's also go to image. Let's go to uh, photo filter. And this time, let's add some magenta. So magenta is kind of a reddish or coolish red. So when we add that, let's take the density down a little bit. Let's play with the density here somewhere. And that immediately is a better look than the original look we were starting at. But let me... So let me step backward and show you where we were. And then adding the magenta in image adjustments, photo filter, gives us a little bit more of a realistic look. Now that much magenta makes it look a little pink. But that, I believe, a 1516, somewhere in there, is just about what we need to make this look real. So the first thing we did was warm it up. The second thing we did was to make it a little bit more contrast so we could pick up that warm color a little bit and contrast the shadows on the face and uh, just a, a, a just more of a change in in uh, in levels. And then the final then the third thing we did was we we warmed, we cooled the warmth up with a little bit of magenta. Okay, I think this looks good. Now, the next thing we want to do, I think, is add a little bit of detail in the end. We want to I mean, these eyes are, I think my eyes are stunning, but the irises, they don't do a lot for me. So I'm going to go over here to the magnifying glass, and I'm going to click on these eyes, and I'm going to bring them up so that I can see both eyes. So I'm going to work on one eye at a time. So I'm going to make a I'm going to create a new layer here. I'm going to have you look down here at the lower bar over here on my um, bottom right hand side, and you're going to see several different choices. You're going to see FX. You're going to see what looks to be a square with a circle in it, and when you mouse over that, you're going to it's going to be an adding a, a, a mask. Masks are for another day. Uh, you're going to see create a new fill or adjustment layer. You're going to see uh, create a new group. All of these are for another day. The one you want is create a new layer. When you click on the, that, you're going to see that that goes on top of this background layer. So I'm going to have you Make sure that you've clicked on the background so that the new layer will go above it. Now, anytime you want a layer above the layer you're currently working on, you simply click on the layer you're working on, and that way you can put a layer above it. So what I want to do here is I want to choose a, a brush. So I'm going to choose the brush over here on my my left hand side and if you look you're going to see the brush tool and you can go up here and you can choose 27 scatter which I think is probably above somewhere all right so this is your 27 scatter brush splatter all right so it's 27 pixels now you're gonna 
highlight that. You're going to work on this layer here, right? The, the, the layer marked one. You're going to rename that layer and you're going to call it light. So you can double click on that and just call it light. You should always name your layers. Even though I don't do that, you should just to keep in mind, you should always lay, uh, I always, I always work very quickly, so I don't bother to do that, but you're still learning and I'd really like you to, to name those layers. So you're going to make this brush the correct size. Now this is basically going to create, you're going to create some light here. So we're going to do the drop down and basically you're going to do left bracket to take it down, right bracket to take it up. So basically that's just going to be a, that's a quick and easy way to change your, your brush size so that you can get a brush that fits what you need for the job you're doing rather than working up here and trying to figure out what brush size you want here once it's on the page you can figure out what size you want and we're gonna go ahead and we're going to create a white and you're gonna make it full opacity so that we've got a very bright white light and you're just going to basically <clears throat> draw it where the where the iris meets the pupil and you're going to basically do something like this and then you're going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller you're going to make this brush a little bit smaller by left by using your left bracket and I'm gonna go ahead and just touch that a couple times <coughs> very very nice as you can see that's a very realistic eye uh, light but when you go back you can see that that is not exactly showing up at its best because the rest of the eye is so light and it's kind of dead. But as you can see, that gives the light, that, that gives this eye oh, so much more light. Now I'm going to have you make a copy of this layer, this light layer. So I'm going to have you go up to Layer, Duplicate Layer, and now I want you to call this this layer right or light right it's because it's for the right eye okay I'm gonna make a copy of that and then you're gonna click on it and highlight it and then you're going to move it so you're gonna click on this particular icon right here at the top of your toolbar it's and if you put your mouse over it and leave it it's going you're going to see that it's the move tool so you're going to grab this and you're going to move it over to the other eye and the reason why you're going to move this over instead of make just copying what you're doing to this eye is because you want to get exactly the same light Okay, there we go. Now when you go back, you will see that these are pretty much the same eyes. But again, these eyes are so light that it's really hard to see that little bit of um, 
of white in there. So I tell you what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to make another we're going to create another layer we're going to make this a fill layer so again because I want this fill layer under the light so that I don't do anything with the lights on the eyes I'm going to have you click back on the image itself and I'm going to have you make a new layer you're going to click create new layer here <clears throat> and you're going to actually create a new layer you're going to go back up here to edit you're going to choose fill and you're going to make this a 50 percent gray fill instead of a background or a foreground or or color you're going to make this a 50 percent gray and when you click on that you see your uh-oh it's now gray it's covering my whole image panic time not panic time but this does show me it i'm going to leave this like this for a few seconds just so i can explain to you where this image is where this layer is as you can see it's under these two lights so nothing you do will affect these two layers working in layers is the key to um success in in photoshop now in the now you're thinking okay that's great but now there's this big gray page in front of your pretty face that's true so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create i'm going to change this from fill layer to overlay and now it has come off the face but it will still be it will still be there for me to manipulate the eyes okay what I want you to do now is rename this layer I okay hi just just it should be intuitive the the, the name should be intuitive so I'm going to um, I fill maybe uh, whatever it is you want to whatever it is you want so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit enter and that is going to be okay all right that is going to be your eye fill now basically you're gonna bring this in and again remember working on on a on a on an image that you bring out into Photoshop is as much art as you as it is um, knowing the tools and uh, here's where some of that art comes in not not only knowing the tools and, and having the knowledge but also knowing when to quit so what I've got here is now the ability for me to darken that eye and to add some light into that eye so the first thing I'm gonna do is go over here to the burn tool and I am going to burn I'm going to do some burning with the burn tool now if you look there is a there's a there's a little triangle at the end of each one of these tools what that means is when you click on the tool you can see that you have several choices here I've got burn dodge and sponge first thing I want to do is burn this and darken this eye up some so I'm going to choose burn which is the hand and if we go over here you can see that my right now my burn tool is just a little bit large so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do my right bracket or my left bracket and just make that a little bit smaller maybe go back to my right bracket make it a little bit bigger 
Now, the beauty of working on this particular, on a separate layer, is that if you do a little bit of darkening and you maybe make it a little darker than, than you might want, you can always go in and erase what you don't want. You can see I'm working right over that white and you're still getting it. Now, so let's go back and take the eraser. And that's at 100%. I'm going to again drop the eraser down until it fits. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit that I had burned into the lash and remove it. I'm going to grab a little bit over here out of the lash and remove that even though I didn't didn't get a lot in it and then I'm going to remove a little bit of this burn because again it's on a different this is a way of dodging and burning non-destructively so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that out right there and you can see the difference in that eye from the other eye. That is a really beautiful eye. And you can see the difference all the way from here. So let's go ahead, but I'll go ahead and bring them up closer and let you see the difference. Look at that, look at the, look at the difference. <clears throat> Even really great eyes can benefit from a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, of fooling around here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here on this eye. Now, if you had a really dark eye, you'd want to do some dodge. So, but let me give you an example of dodge. On, I'll, I'll do it on this eye after I burn. Okay, let's go back. Let's burn this in. I like to burn just a little at a time. Maybe even make that ring around the edge a little bit darker. Great. Now, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to use my eraser, and I'm going to pull just a little bit of that out on this one side, right the, the side right across from the light itself. And I'm going to go ahead now that I've burned, and I'm going to dodge a little bit. So we're just going to hit a little bit of dodge in here. Okay, and then going back, you will see at the you'll see how beautiful those eyes are now. You know, I think that those the whites might be a little bit bright, just a little bit bright. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up here. First, I'll work on one light. I'm going to maybe take the opacity down. Just a little bit down to 85 and see how that looks. 85. And I'm going to take the other one down to 85 as well.
A5. So that's the right eye now. Okay, I think that looks really awesome. And now you go from drab to fab, as far as the eyes are concerned. So basically what we've done so far is we have brightened the image up, we have uh, intensified the color a little bit, we have really done work on the eyes to make them pop, really to give them the same amount of color and that uh, we, we have in with the uh, rest of this uh, image. And uh, we've, so that's what we've done so far. We've done basically, uh, we've upped the color, we've created a, uh, a really beautiful skin that's that has that has a lot of rich color in it and we've done the eyes and the eyes basically have a, a little bit of, um, of of life to them now the next thing I think we need to do is work on this hair the hair again kind of looks a little bit flat uh, and uh, maybe a dark hair like this has a tendency to look a little bit flat so let's go ahead and lighten that hair up now in this case you don't really need to work directly from the image so basically I'm gonna put I'm gonna stay at the top and I'm gonna put my new layer up above the two lights so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to make this instead of well let me show you and if I were to do lights and darks on that hair right now as a new layer you can see And again, I'm going to put it up on a soft brush. I'm going to do a soft brush. And I'm going to, I don't know, it doesn't matter what size you pick because you're going to make it fit. So you're going to go ahead and go back and make it fit. Okay. I'm going to actually take that little dot off. Again. You're not working really small right now. So you're going to just see that little dot there. Okay, that gives you an idea about. So, let's say it, you if you just wanted to work on this layer at I don't know, opacity of white at the opacity of say 27 and you clicked on that, not real good. That looks like some white crap on my really dark hair. Well, interestingly enough, what happens here when you turn it into a soft light, you will see so that all that white that was very disturbing has now become almost a gleam on the hair so that it gives you know just a little bit of gives you that kind of feeling that that hair that's a blunt kind of a little bit of a round bluntness there again uh, the six another key to success with uh, doing um, multiply and and soft light and such is changing the size of your brush to suit the image that you want and as you can see that rounds that head up it gives you that blunt cut look and just for kicks and giggles because I'm a worrier over here where I was working 
I'm going to go ahead and take some of that white out that had kind of spread. Yep, see, and there it goes. So that you don't have any bizarre white areas when you're finished. Okay, I think that looks good. Um, I'm just not sure about how that's going to look when I'm finished, so let's just add a little bit more light. All right. Okay, if you if you notice across here, there is a uh, this area looks a little blunt. If you really like that, if uh, if you really want to keep that, that's fine. If you know, anytime you look at a hair, if it's if it's a hair, and and of course, if you are blogging a hair, then you're probably not going to want to change it because you're basically selling a client a lie if you're changing it. Anytime you want to, uh, and same with the eye. I did these eyes because I wasn't selling eyes. I'm doing the hair because I'm not selling hair. I'm actually attempting to create an image that really, really looks real and very soft. But anytime you're selling an image, you don't want to go in and do anything that that changes the basic way it looks. Maybe you want to intensify it. Maybe you want to, you know, create just uh, saturate it a little bit, but just to bring it up. But you really don't want to make the kind of changes we're talking about here. So basically. That's the light I've got. And, you know, you could even do something like the, the, this light if you want to. But I kind of find those edges a little jarring, especially with the lights that, I mean, with the hairs that are, that are coming down into my face. That's so soft, and then that edge is really hard, which, you know, could very well be what she intends. But I, I just find that edge a little bit jarring. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to go for my little hairbrush. And I'm going to go, so I'm basically going to choose 134. Now, and I'm going to drop it down a little bit until I get let me sweep across that to see oh okay I guess I want to enlarge it okay awesome now, as you can see, that the way that's turned is not the way we want it to be turned. So we need to alter the properties of this brush. And we want to make a new brush preset. We're going to call it Hair 1. And we're going to go ahead and... Change. Okay. So it's basically a grass brush, but we're going to go ahead and change it so that it's a hairbrush. As you can see right now, this hair is flipped up, and we need to actually change the flip so that it's upside down. And that immediately creates what looks to be a very realistic hair. But I think we need to do, 
first we need to change the color out to black and then we need to take out and bring the color dynamics up and take out the hue jitter do the control which is off and Purtify. Let's try that and see what we get there. Okay, let's try this. So we've got color dynamics and we've got... I have a feeling it's still going to... Alright, so we've got brush shape. We've got shape dynamics. We've got scattering. which we really want and it looks to me like this is good so let's go in and now we're going to drop it down a little bit more so we're going to we're going to use our right bracket and we're just going to sweep across here okay and we're going to bring up the opac undo that. We're going to bring up the opacity on this so that it is 100%. We're going to do it. Yep, that's what I figured. Even though I'm dropping the Okay. Now this might look very strange to you now, but it is going to give you just that little bit of once we once we darken this up, it's going to give us just that little bit of Okay, we're going to take the little bit out of that long hair. All right, we're going to take this eraser down by right bracketing. I'm going to go in, I'm going to remove this little bit. Now, we're also going to just soften up these initial edges. Let's remove those little hard edges off of it. Again, the way, you know, uh, hair is a, a difficult thing. You use whatever you've got on hand. You can also get hair brushes, just so you know. Although something like this was just a little bit of, just need to soften up that those little bit of edges. I just used a, a grass brush. And... I'm of the use whatever you've got at hand um, philosophy. So now you're going to go in, you're going to adjust this uh, layer so that 
you're going to darken it a little bit. You're going to darken it until it pretty much merges with the rest. Just a little, just take a glance at it, look at it. You might need to actually do a little bit of that. Okay, actually that looks very, very nice. It kind of gives it its softness without actually losing the character of the image of, of the uh, soft, you soften that hard edge without actually losing any of the character of the of the that's really beautiful let's go in and add a little more okay just go in add a little bit more of this So we take that down a little bit. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's make a third layer because I think creating that just made And this way, if we overwork it, we can lose it. Okay. That looks pretty good. It gives it just that little bit of softness, as you can see, without, and again, you know, you never know. I've got like a million brushes, hair brushes, and you, you just, you just, you do whatever it, with hair, you just do whatever it takes to, to accomplish what you need to accomplish, because hair is a difficult thing. You throw everything at hair, but the kitchen sink. And if you had the kitchen sink in here, you'd throw that at it too. All right, then the final thing is this area here, all right over here, on my ears. So I think I have to do this one of two ways. I need to soften that line, this line right here. So let me try, I'm going to try the healing brush tool. And, okay, that needs to be much, much smaller. And I just find that the healing brush tool works really beautifully well, and it just subtracts a line there. But we also need to get it, basically as close to that line as we can because that's what we need to capture that color so you're going to choose alt and you're going to click on okay so basically you're going to alt click you're going to hold alt down and click to get to grab this source as you can see oh I know why unfortunately we now have to work on 
the main picture. So I'm going to suggest that we make a backup in case this is an accident. And in all honesty, I forgot to do this at the beginning. You should always make a copy of your original so that you can go back to the original if for some reason you screw up. So any t the first thing you should do is create a copy of your original layer so that any work that you do can be done on this. So here we go. So we're going to get Alt, click, and we are going to, now that is really good. I prefer one to do a, a, a many, many small cuts rather than one cut and make a mistake. And look how soft that is now. We're going to do the same thing on the other ear. Very nice. I'm going to go over to this ear. I'm going to again choose my healing tool. I'm going to get in as close as I can to that line. I'm going to Alt. I'm going to left click just so I can catch that source. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, I think that we are done, pretty much done with the manipulation. So the next thing we need to do is crop this. And again, I to what I told you last time was that it is never a good idea to put an image smack dab in the middle of a screen unless it's a square because then you've got that pyramid effect and that's a very strong base. When you're doing a rectangle, you're going to want to move it either to your extreme right or your extreme, well, more, more to your right or to your left. So what I'm going to do basically so that you can get that, it's just a more pleasing look. And in this case, I think we're just going to take, we're going to crop off this little bit of, of, um, of um, clothing that we had caught. And we're going to go ahead and take this up just to under the base of the necklace. just so that we, the eye doesn't really go down and catch that. Okay. All right. So we're going to crop here. Now I want you to notice that this crop tool has a grid on it. When you first crop something, it should have a grid on it. If you have to go back and recrop it and you find that it doesn't have that grid, when you go to move something within the crop area, it's not going to work. You're going to you're going to get, I don't know, some weird weird thing like let me show you. When I go to head and when I let's say I crop it, now I want to crop it again. And you notice that the grid is not here. Sometimes you forget the grid isn't there, and then you go to move it. You want, might want to move the image. Or now, for example, you'll get something like this. You don't want, you don't want any, any other cropping within this crop. You really don't. So basically, before, if you have to recrop and you want to you wanna manipulate the image within the crop, you need to click on the crop edge so that you get this grid. Okay. Uh, this has caused me many, many, many times of having to undo the crop because I just, I forget, you know, I forget that now, at least I did at the beginning, but now 
if I go into crop and I realize it doesn't have a grid on it, I just click the grid. So it saves me some some time and some effort. Now you want to go ahead, when you're satisfied with the crop, you want to go ahead and hit this check button. And there you go. Okay. Now, I am going to suggest you grab every layer that you've worked on. You hold shift down. You start with the bottom. You hold shift down. You grab the top layer so you've got them all. And then you go to duplicate layers. And you will see you now have two layers, two sets of these layers. The top layer is all highlighted. The bottom layer is not. So I would like you now to go ahead, hit the layer icon up on your menu, and choose Merge Layers. So those are, that's going to merge all the layers you've got highlighted without worrying about changing any of the layers that you've worked so hard on okay and so that if you if for example you go back and you find you know something amiss you can you don't have to undo everything you can go in and change whatever it is that you're with that it, whatever it is you've undone or you've done and and uh and then you just copy them again and so it's a way of it's a way of saving the work you've done okay at this point we're looking pretty good we've cropped we've made all the changes we need to make to the face and the skin I think I you know I, I've thought about it and I'm I might actually would normally want to put a little bit of light in these lips maybe do a little dodging but um, or a little soft light but I, I really like these lips just the way they are so I don't think I'm gonna do that um, now what we need to do is go ahead and get get some work done on the background I think um, a background like this is um, it's pretty plain right now so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to bring up another layer I'm going to go down to the bottom of my uh, layers uh, panel and I'm going to click a new layer I'm gonna go over here I'm going to go ahead and choose my gradient tool if you notice you've got gradient you've got paint bucket and you've got 3d drop tool material drop tool so if the paint bucket is here and you don't see the gradient all you have to do is right click on that or just uh, left click on that little button and you will get the gradient tool so basically I'm gonna just kind of do a little bit of work here bring some of these up I love the fact that I can so alright so that's maybe a little bit better maybe I wanna just kinda of give it some give it some depth which is great We're close. We're almost done. Um, what I'd like to do now is there's a couple things you can do now to uh, add some uh, interest. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, and it's kind of a uh, signature of mine, uh, I'll use it every once in a while, is go to Filter, Render, and you can choose one of two things you can choose well the first thing you should do is smart sharpen this whole thing actually you should really go ahead and click both of these copy them 
you want to make copies of everything, especially before you merge layers. So you're going to merge those layers and you want to do a filter, a smart sharpen, or use the unsharpened mask. Either way, we'll try the smart sharpen first. And if that doesn't work, we're going to go ahead and choose the unsharpened layer. Okay, that looks really good. Uh, let's go ahead. You can choose one of, I don't know, you can choose, you can choose a couple of different items here. Uh, one is to render and choose lens flare. And as you can see, this will give you kind of as if you've got a, as if you've taken the photo and you've gotten, uh, you've gotten a lens, uh, a lens flare. This basically is a uh, 50 to 300 millimeter zoom. So that's what this would look like. Uh, you can undo this if you like. Uh, cause, and I'm going to actually, I, I end up will use this, but let's say I, let's uh, just for the, just for kicks and giggles, I want to give you a few choices here. You can choose, say you want a lens flare. You can either choose 35 millimeter prime which will look something like this. Oh, oh, sorry. Step backward. Um, filter. Render. Lens flare. So, hmm. Okay. Oh, I guess that is. Okay, that's that's another way thing you can do. Let's go back to let's go undo, edit, step backward. Or you can choose undo lens flare. Let's go back to filter, render, lens flare. You've got 10 105 millimeter prime which would look something like this. You can undo, undo lens flare. You can go back and again, play, you know, uh, uh, Photoshop is fun and you really do want to have a little bit of fun. So uh, you can go to filter and f filters are always fun. So let's go to render. You can also go to movie prime. Ooh, I like that one. That's a very nice look. Or you can do that, or you can do this. You can maybe even fade the lens flare. Oh, that looks lovely. Now see? Very nice. But anyway, you want to go ahead and step backward. A couple times. Now you could also, if you like, you could go in and render and choose lighting effects. And this will give you Again, this is very uh, heavy on film. This will give you, uh, it's very heavy on your machine. So you, this is something you can do if you like. You can manipulate these, uh, these circles so that you can go in closer or further away, further out. Once you've done something like this, so once you've chosen, you're happy with what you like, 
or what you see, you can do something like this. You can undo this if you like, or you can, I'll go ahead and undo it, step backward, just so you can see how easy that is. Um, you can also redo, step forward. You know, I think I like this better without this because I just really feel like this this really does um, bring in bring in some real color so I think the last thing I'm gonna do is play around with my saturation so uh, I'm sorry my vibrance so I'm gonna bring up my vibrance a little bit So that you see those, you can see it right in here, right up here, and maybe in the eyes a little bit. That might be a little bit too strong. Let's just go 10. Let's just go 10. Okay, so that's vibrance. And then, what for, for kicks and giggles? I'm going to do render, lens flare, and I am going to do that. And I'm going to tone it down just a little bit. I'm going to fade it out just a wee little bit. Let's try 95. Okay, and I'm going to save this, save as, instead of trin raw, I'm going to do trin final. I'm going to, first I'm going to save this as a PNG because we discussed the difference between a PNGs, JPEGs, and bitmaps last time. So this is a nice medium, and this is really good for uh, bring it, putting up on um, Flickr uh, for things like um, Pinterest, um, WordPress. Uh, WordPress will take a PNG if it's not too big, but uh, for things like um, Pinterest, those kinds of things, you do need to make make a, a JPEG, or it's just uh, it's just too big. Uh, okay, so now you can see all of this work has been done. I'm going to urge you to save this. You're going to want to save this. Save as, and you're going to want to save this as a Photoshop file, a PSD. You're going to call this Trin Final Working. I'm going to save it as a PSD, and I'll go ahead and put it in my PSD files. There we go. Okay. Now, close this out. And then, I want you to compare the raw file to the finished file. Raw. Go ahead and make it full screen to the final. And that is my lesson for the day. I know I I, I did tell you uh, 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 
I did go through each of these step by step. Uh, as I said, a lot of it's art, as opposed a lot of it's just art and realizing um, realizing when to stop and when something's right and when something's wrong, um, and what needs to be done to a photo. But that's something you will learn as you go along. Uh, this is just uh, such a better image than this was. And this was a great image when I brought it out. Um, but it really is, this is the secret, this is the magic. And this is what all the people who jealously guard their, their methods do. And uh, anyway, so this is, this is the end of my second tutorial. Uh, please watch for a uh, uh, another tutorial. I'm going to cover everything on this screen. I didn't want to do this today because I w I did not want to try your patience. Um, but I do. If you want to come back for more, and if you like what you see, go ahead and like this uh, this video, and please subscribe to my page and. I think that uh, you will be very happy at the end of, I intend to do several more tutorials. I, in, I intend to actually do a series of Photoshop tutorials because there's just not enough free stuff out there. There really isn't. This is Trinity Aeronaut, and I thank you for watching. Have a great day.